Okay, so we're going to solve this problem where we're given a cubic equation that has roots alpha, beta, and gamma. And now we need to find another cubic equation which has now got different roots beta, gamma over alpha, alpha, gamma over beta, and alpha, beta over gamma. So the natural approach to this might be to try and solve this cubic equation, find what alpha, beta, and gamma are, and then use this to construct a cubic equation with these new roots. But unfortunately solving this cubic is actually extremely difficult, so we're going to look at a neat way of doing this that bypasses the need to actually solve our cubic equation. So if you imagine this is our original equation with roots alpha, beta, and gamma, we can equivalently write this as we've got x minus alpha, just using the factor theorem, the fact that alpha, beta, and gamma are all roots. This means that x minus alpha, x minus beta, x minus gamma are all factors. And then when we expand these brackets, we're going to get some nice identities called Vieta's formulas here. So we get x cubed, and then for our x squared terms, we have the negative of alpha plus beta plus gamma times x squared. And then for our x terms, we have all of the product pairs, so alpha, beta, and then we've also got beta, gamma, and finally alpha, gamma, multiplied by x. And then finally, we've just got the negative of alpha, beta, gamma, so this minus alpha, beta, gamma is all equal to zero. So then you can see that the coefficient of x squared here, this is going to be equal to negative one, and our coefficient of x here, this term, is going to be equal to three. So we can start to get some information about alpha, beta, and gamma. And finally here, our negative alpha, beta, gamma term is equal to positive three as well. So then we can read off from this, we've got the negative of alpha plus beta plus gamma is negative one, so we've got the sum alpha plus beta plus gamma is one, and then the sum of all of the pairs, we've got alpha beta plus beta gamma plus alpha gamma, this is just equal to three, and finally the product, well the negative of this is three, so the product is equal to negative three. And now we can think about what's going to happen with our new cubic equation that has these roots. So rather than having to write out these as fractions, I'm just going to introduce some new variables here. So we'll define, we'll just write it up here, so we can say a is equal to this first root, beta gamma over alpha. We'll say capital B is defined as this alpha gamma over beta. And finally we've got capital C as the third root, so alpha beta over gamma. So then if we've got a cubic equation with these roots, capital A, B, C, we can again expand the brackets just like before. So we've got X minus capital A times X minus capital B times X minus C is zero. And then when we expand this, we get the same sort of thing as we saw before. So A plus B plus C is the coefficient of X squared. And then we've got the sum of all of the pairs, A, B plus B, C plus A, C times X. And finally, we've got minus the product A, B, C, this is all equal to zero. So now the problem is effectively reduced to finding what is A plus B plus C, what is AB plus BC plus AC, and finally what is this product ABC. So if we can find these quantities, thinking about them in terms of what we know about alpha, beta, and gamma already, then we've solved the problem without actually having to solve the cubic equation. And we can actually get an easy win in here because if we look at A, B, C, the product of all of these, if you imagine we multiply them all together, in the numerator we've got beta, gamma, alpha, gamma, alpha, beta, so you've got each of alpha, beta, and gamma are appearing twice in the numerator. So we can say then that A, B, C is going to be alpha squared, beta squared, gamma squared in the numerator, and then in our denominator we've just got alpha, beta, gamma, so divided by alpha times beta times gamma, and then this cancels and this is just equal to alpha, beta, gamma, and we know the value of alpha, beta, gamma is negative three. So we can actually already read off here, a, b, c, this product is equal to negative three. So we can replace this here with a negative three in our equation, and now we just need to find the values of a plus b plus c, and then also the sum of these product pairs as well. And we'll start with the product pairs. So we think about what a times b is, we've got beta, gamma over alpha times alpha, gamma, over beta. So in the numerator we've got alpha, beta, and two lots of gamma. So we're going to get alpha, beta, gamma squared, and then the denominator alpha times beta. So you can see there's going to be some nice cancellation there. And similarly with b times c, we get two copies of alpha, and then we've got a beta, gamma each in the numerator and denominator. So we've got alpha squared, beta, gamma, over beta, gamma. And then finally we have two copies of beta, so we've got alpha, beta squared, gamma, over 
alpha gamma for the product A times C. And then with the cancellation here, this just reduces then to the sum of the squares of each of alpha, beta and gamma. So we can write this now as we'll just put them in order the alpha squared plus beta squared plus gamma squared. So now how do we work this out? Because we only know what the sum of the roots is, we know what the product pairs is, and we know what the product of all three is. But there's actually a nice trick we can use, which is to consider what would happen if we expanded the bracket. So we take alpha plus beta plus gamma all squared. So we know what this is, because this is just one squared. And if we were to expand the brackets, we'd get, first of all, alpha squared plus beta squared plus gamma squared, which is what we're trying to find which will tell us what this coefficient is going to be. But then we'd also get some extra terms. We'd get all of these product pairs appearing twice. You'd have alpha times gamma and also gamma times alpha, for example. So you'd have two lots of each of the product pairs, alpha beta plus beta gamma plus alpha gamma. So now you can see that we can just read off here. We've got on the left-hand side one squared, because we know what this sum is, is equal to the sum of our squares of alpha, beta and gamma. We've also got plus 2 times the product paired is equal to 3, so plus 2 times 3. So on the left hand side now we just do 1 take away 6, we can see that we get negative 5 is this alpha squared plus beta squared plus gamma squared, and this is equal to our AB plus BC plus AC term. So this is equal to our coefficient that we're trying to find. So now all that remains actually, we've got a negative 5 we can put in here, so all that remains now is to find a plus b plus c. And to do this we'll put these fraction expressions for a, b and c over a common denominator, alpha, beta, gamma. So a we need to multiply by beta, gamma, so we're going to get beta, gamma all squared divided by alpha, beta, gamma. And then for b we're having to multiply by alpha and gamma, so you see we get alpha, gamma squared again there, and for C, we need to multiply by alpha and beta, so we get alpha beta squared. So we're going to end up then with alpha gamma all squared plus alpha beta all squared. So again, we're in a problem like before where we don't know what the sum of these squared expressions is, but we do know what the sum of each of the individual pairs is, alpha beta plus beta gamma plus alpha gamma. We know that that's 3. So if we square this, just like before, we take alpha beta plus beta gamma plus alpha gamma and square all of this. We know that this left hand side is just 9 because it's 3 squared. But then if you imagine expanding out all of these brackets, we get first of all each of these individual expressions all squared. So this is what we're looking for, our numerator alpha beta squared plus beta gamma squared plus alpha gamma all squared. But then let's think about what else we get. We get each of these pairs appearing twice, so we also get plus 2 times, we've got alpha beta times alpha gamma gives us an alpha squared times beta gamma, and then our next ones where we've got 1 and 2 here, we've got two lots of beta, so alpha beta squared gamma, and finally the second and third product have two gammas in there, so we need to have plus alpha beta times gamma squared. And then we can take this expression in the brackets and actually factorise out, because we've got a common factor of alpha, beta, gamma in all three of these terms. So then we've got alpha, beta, all squared, plus beta, gamma, all squared, plus alpha, gamma, all squared. And then we've also got plus 2 times alpha, beta, gamma, and then we're also multiplying now by alpha plus beta plus gamma. So this has worked out quite nicely, because now we've got on the right-hand side our thing we're interested in, and then we've got some known quantities here as well. So now we can write this as the sum of the product pairs all squared on the left hand side is just equal to 9, and then on the right hand side we've got our sum of all the pairs all squared, and then we've got 2 times the product, so 2 times negative 3, and then we've also got to multiply that by the sum of alpha plus beta plus gamma, which is 1, so it's plus 2 times negative 3 times 1, so this just gives us a negative 6. Then when we add this onto the right hand side we get 15, so we're saying now that 15 is equal to alpha beta all squared plus beta gamma all squared plus alpha gamma all squared, but remember we're actually looking for this divided by alpha beta gamma, so we now need to divide this by negative 3, so we do the same on both sides, we get 15 over negative 3 gives us 
a negative 5. And this is equal to our a plus b plus c. So we're now actually ready to solve the problem. We can just read off what this final cubic needs to be. So we've got x cubed minus a plus b plus c. So taking away the negative 5 gives us plus 5 as our coefficient of x squared. And then our coefficient of x we've seen before is negative 5. So we've got take away 5x. And finally, take away a, b, c. So taking away the negative 3 gives us a plus 3 equal to 0. So then we've got a cubic equation, which its roots are of the form beta gamma over alpha, alpha gamma over beta, and alpha beta over gamma. And I think it's really interesting that if you were to actually try and solve either of these cubics, the roots are actually really horrible to work with, but we can bypass all of that just by using Vieta's formulas and using some of these little identities to get a really nice simple looking solution in the end, which is much nicer than having to actually solve either of the cubics.